Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Dynasty Warrior series, Three Kingdoms Tactics. Um, let me take you step by step towards uh, knowing this game and understanding uh, what you should do, the things to know before you start this game, and uh, how to get the game right, how to get to a high level fast. And I'll try to keep it short and simple for you guys so that uh, you can enjoy your gameplay when you reach the mid-game stage. So, uh, some things to know before starting, all right, is that uh, this is not a pay-to-win game. So even if you can spend hard cash and uh, probably even throw in hundreds, thousands, it will just give you an advantage for sure, but it doesn't mean that you are the best in the game just by paying. So this is something that is important to note. So uh, you may not want to cash heavy, save the money. All right, and um, being the top player in this game doesn't mean that you will win the entire game. And this game is heavily reliant on um, teamwork and also uh, based on your alliance, which is the guild. Okay, so you can't play this game on solo. If you're, you're out aiming to play this game on solo, it doesn't work out that well. Okay, the next part is that faster players actually dominate the game fast. Because um, this game itself is about occupying lands. Uh, at a, of course, the better you get, you occupy higher level lands. So if you were there first or you were there early, then definitely you got the advantage and someone else that is uh, slower than you couldn't beat you to it. If you are starting this game, I would highly recommend that um, you just spam the server when it's open. Meaning to say, um, every day the server will be released on the 11 o'clock and 7 o'clock. There's a chance. Uh, it might not happen every day, maybe every two days once. It depends on the amount of players that are actually playing this game. Um, you can actually wait for the timing, and that's where you actually uh, force yourself to enter the game as one of the early people. Um, if you're late by probably one, two hours, I think it's fine, but if uh, you're one day late when the server launch, I would suggest you just wait for the next one to come. If not, you're really going to be way behind and you'll be having, you'll be having a lot of trouble trying to keep up. Uh, with the current players that are already ahead of you. The other thing to note there is that um, this is a Chinese game. So most, play most people in there are chi from China, from Taiwan, Hong Kong, or Malaysia. So it's, it's going to be pretty hard to understand the game. Okay, but um, do not worry because um, if you're playing on certain devices, they do offer translation. So um, when, when we're talking about starter period, when, when you start a new account and you enter the game, there's this 48-hour uh, time frame that you, you actually have a lot of advantage doing whatever you want. Uh, you get to use lesser stamina, uh, you get to recover troops fast, uh, you get to build things fast. You have to maximize this 48-hour uh, period. It's really very important because once you cross out of this, you will feel that your gameplay becomes slower. I'll, I'll just assume that uh, if you're watching this, you're kind of clueless and um, you have no idea what is going to happen. So here are the few things that I would like to let you know before you start. N number one, do not worry about the heroes given to you. Uh, you are going to do draws, okay? And sometimes you, are, you may try to keep uh, achieving that five-star draws, but uh, maybe you just don't get it or maybe you just get a four-star draw. So do not worry about them. Okay, because um, it's all right, it's all right. It, it, it won't really affect you that much. But if you really feel out of luck and you find that uh, I don't have a good gameplay or uh, I'm getting bad draws, I don't really like it, then uh, feel free to wait for the next server. Yeah, because when the next server comes, you can just try your luck again. And if um, on, a, on a very good scenario, after the tutorial, you'll get uh, an extra draw. So if you sprung well at this uh, extra draw, then congrats for you. Uh, you're getting a good 5-star character. But uh, if not, you probably get a common character, a lieutenant, which is a 3-star, which doesn't really work well for you. You may want to restart, but... Um, you need to. You have to wait a bit for the next server to come out. Knowing this, I honestly encourage you to not reset your game if you started the server. All right. If let's say you are the first few people to enter the server, please do not reset your game. Don't worry about the heroes given; they will definitely come. Moving on to number two, you will not lose this game even if someone beat your main castle down. So do not worry about that. You, you'll just be a prisoner if, you, let's say, your castle is being beat down, meaning to say you cannot do anything that's alliance-related until you pay a certain fine. 
to the to the alliance who captured you. Yeah, it's not much of a big difference. It's just that uh, you are in this status that uh, limits you doing to doing things. But it's fine. It's not really a very serious thing. You can still play a game as per normal. Just that you can't uh, participate in alliance related activities. So um, with that being said, let us move on to start the game. So when you start the game, okay, they 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 will give you different cities to choose. However, I recommend you choosing Neipei or Jiangdong. Um, and they are really popular, so you will probably get the top alliance in this uh, game, this server itself. So usually the top alliance in every server. I have experimented. Don't get me wrong. I tried many different servers, and it's always the Neipei people or the Jiangdong people that make, made it out on to the top. Um, the reason of being that is that uh, there's actually this um, global mission. So when you start the game and the server is new, there's this global mission that uh, requires you to occupy certain lands. Okay, and that's why um, choosing Neipei and Jiangdong will put you in one of the biggest mission of the game. To be fair, it's not really a very amazing mission. It just gives you 500 gold, but hey, 500 gold is still gold, right? Okay, so with that, I'm going with Neipei. Okay, and then uh, you are going to answer some questionnaire that determines your character. Honestly, this doesn't matter. It's not important. Okay, you can answer it however you want. The thing that you have to take note of is that um, when they determine uh, what's your personality, they actually offer you two stuff. Either two equipments or either tactic points and equipments or either coins and equipments. So there will be a mix and match. The best you can get out of it is actually either coin and one equipment or either tactic point and one equipment. The reason why we don't go for two equipment is that you need to have level 20 to equip the equipments, which it's going to take a while to reach there. And so you can do way much more with just the coin or the tactic points that they provide to you. I'm going to skip the tutorial. I assume that you have actually cleared the tutorial and I'll move on. So as you can see, there's uh, things like jade, gold, coin, wood, iron, stone, food. So jade is actually cash. So things it's actually coins that you purchase using real life money. Gold is actually the value for it. So you can use jade to exchange for go. So go is the one that actually speeds up everything. Uh, it, it, it lets you have uh, draws. Like uh, if you want to draw a character, same like any other game, uh, you can pull a five draw using go. Okay, or you can either speed up your building process. You can either make make your units retreat home faster. These are some of the things that you can use go for. All right. So the other one, the next one is coin. So coin pretty much, uh, that's, it has its own users, like um, doing blacksmith or like uh, you can do re recruitment, but the spawn level skills kind of recruitment. And you can also use it for search centers, um, stables. These are all the, in the future when you progress to mid game. So your wood, iron, stone, and food are actually resources that require, that, that is per hour basis. So if you see the number plus 3,000, plus uh, 4,000, 5,000, that is the number that is going to be given to you per hour. It's on the per hour basis. And the number below, um, for example, 15,000 slash 90,000, it's um, the, the first number is what you currently have. And the one, the one behind the slash is uh, what's the maximum you can hold. But you can exceed them. If you, let's say you clear a mission or you do farming, you can exceed the maximum number, just that it wouldn't grow on a per hour basis anymore. Um, the other one we have to highlight is actually Tome. So these are very important because um, they allow you to do uh, subjugating, they allow you to do farming. So try to hold on to this as many as you can. They recharge uh, every one hour, one for one hour. So the maximum you can hold is 30. Okay, And uh, I suggest using goals to buy more Tomes because they are really very important. I'll explain to you why later. So the other one is, uh, the one beside it is actually the starter timer. So you have 48 hours to actually uh, have the starter advantage. After that, uh, you're back to square one. Things go really slow. So try to make full use of this starter period when it's given to you. So there are things like the mission, the officer, the tactics. Um, you can go in and explore. I don't want to dig down into details too much. Okay, it's just for understanding. So you can just preview this yourself. For this gameplay, there's something that you have to take note of is uh, that you really, really need stones a lot. So if let's say you're trying to occupy lands, uh, be sure to occupy uh, more towards the stones. 
okay, trying to assess them fast. Okay, the wood and the irons have to be um, somewhat similar. You have to keep them in balance. The food, um, it doesn't really matter at the early stage. Yeah, you can have any amount you want. You want to have it high or low, I'll leave it up to you. But just remember that the stones have to be the most. Because almost all the art groups require you to use stone. And a lot of stones. So you really have to farm them out. Okay, so before we move on, uh, I would like to introduce you to two different kind of play style. The first one is the free to play. The second one is the pay to play. So I'll just go with the free to play first. So since it's friendly for every user, if you are going for the free to play method, uh, probably after completing the tutorial, you're going to have Guan Ping, right? Uh, and I assume that you have not have any good draws. Okay. So you can set your first party as uh, Guan Ping and uh, another supporting character. Okay. And um, you have to have the second party, which uh, also require two random soldiers. Because um, this second party's duty is to actually pave paths for you. Uh, you may need to reach certain areas, but uh, you, it's, it's a connecting game. So the grids are connected. So you need a unit to actually help you pursue where you want to pursue and just uh, complete a path for you. So you can uh, abandon it later. So let's say um, when, once you're done creating the path, as long as you have a, have, a, have a occupied land beside it, you wouldn't need the connecting land anymore. Okay, so um, when we're doing Guan Ping, okay, he, he's quite good. He can be used for cavalry or spears uh, as a main. So you can use him to try to get the bigger levels, like level 1 or level 2 uh, resource land. Once you advance to your second day of your gameplay, you will actually be given a free 5-star character, which is Pang Te. So he's pretty good. Um, if you didn't have any draws, he's really good. So you can set him as a main after that. Okay, so if you're going for the pay-to-play style, uh, you probably unlock Sun Te and Sun Jian as uh, your main, all right? And um, it will be advisable to put them in two separate parties so that you can actually scale it uh, at a f uh, more stable rate. So meaning to say both of these parties actually does the same thing. So the second party is actually way more flexible. It actually um, paves the path and also to occupy the stronger lands. So the first and the second party will aim to grow in level, and the second and third party will aim to create pathway. This is the pay-to-play style. So right now, the goal of this game is to reach level 7. So what do you require for it? Um, I, have, I will leave down the requirements in the description below. So these are the things that uh, we will need. And um, if you are looking at the garrison side, please do not level anything unless you are ready for war. There's really no point in leveling the garrison. It's, it's really meant for combat purpose or uh, prevention of other people attacking your land and such. Uh, you don't need all this at the early stage. So long as you join a good alliance and you are on good terms with alliance, and nobody will come and touch you. Even in the first 48 hours, no one will really attack you. They wouldn't want to break their protection status. If, if you try to advance to another unit, uh, I mean to another neighbor, by attacking his land, well, you will lose your protection status, meaning to say that anyone else can attack you. So, just um, follow the missions. Uh, once you click on missions, they'll actually show you different number of missions. Just follow the missions through, uh, focus on them, and uh, use go if you really do not want to wait for the upgrade. Sometimes it takes quite long. All right, but uh, preferably use it on palace, warehouse, and conscript upgrades because uh, you might really need to accelerate fast. So here are some of the tips that uh, can let you uh, access to level 7 palace faster. So crucially, why level 7? Because uh, it's realistic to get to level 7 in 48 hours. If you're following this guide well, you will definitely reach level 7. For sure, within this 48 hours period. The tips of uh, reaching level 7 palace faster is that you always focus on leveling the palace and the warehouse. So the next tip is actually to join the top alliance in your region because they will conquer NPC castles or cities, which will give you resources per hour. So being in an alliance will give you the extra boost in your resources. So please join an alliance and join the top one. A good alliance leader will encourage everyone to participate in um, all the battles. And you actually get bonus rewards while doing that. Um, even if you don't participate, you will still get some, but not all. And if you are already playing and you are the type of guy with a leadership uh, personality, please do not create your own alliance unless you want to commit to this game like it's your job. 
So the first purpose of um, getting there fast is actually to make sure all your territory limits okay, are filled with level 3 lands. So um, the end result is that you should abandon all the lower level lands okay, and uh, get level 3 lands for every single one you can hold. If you are not ready to take on level 4 lands, please don't do it because um, you'll lose too many soldiers in the process. As you know, um, if you are losing too much troops just to occupy a land, you actually have to waste time to conscript more. So it doesn't. There's, there isn't really much of a difference between a level three land and a level four land, except for the power, the power level. Okay, it just makes you look good on paper on the rankings, uh, but uh, throughout the resources per hour, it actually doesn't really matter much. You will still get roughly the same. So just go with the level three lands. It's easier. Your wood and iron and food is meant for the conscript. So uh, you want all these to upgrade and not keep spending time on the conscript thing. So take note of this. So. Um, for your knowledge, level 3 lands require about 1,600 troops uh, and they provide 400 resources per hour. Level 4 lands requires about 2,800 troops and they provide about 600 per hour. So as you can see from here, uh, it's only a 200 per hour difference. Doesn't really matter too much. So just get all the level 3 lands. Okay, so as you progress, just abandon all the lower level lands and keep some territories open for yourself so that you can uh, make a pathway for higher level lands. So there are some bonus tips that can help you get uh, things fa done faster. So is that um, always have land space beside a level 4 resource land so that you can occupy them later easily. Yeah, You don't want to have to create the whole pathway again to reach that level 4 land. So just keep one a few of them beside a level 4 so you can just occupy them immediately later. The next tip is that you have uh, limited stamina. So you can always have a second set of main team. So I'm I'm just giving you an example. Let's say you have um, let's say you have Sun Ce and as the main party, there can be a Guan Ping as the second main party, but you don't bring them out first. So you you can use finish the stamina of Sun Ce, uh, doing his stuff. After he's done, just remove him from party, swap with Guan Ping, and then continue with whatever you want to do. So at the first forty eight hours, removing the lineup, uh, you can keep adjusting soldiers anyhow you want. But after that they will not refund you any soldiers at all. So you can't remove the lineup um, as and when you like. So the next tip that can help you is that do not belittle the cost 3 heroes with your A rank combat ability. They can fill your team early in the game as the second deputy and provide advantage in taking land. They are easy to get and you can evolve them to better states. Uh, it's really good so that you do not waste time trying to farm out for the third character I understand that you want to put three five stars character inside a team, but it will take some time, so don't rush into it. Use this as fearless. It will really help you a lot. So regarding about coins, um, do spend them fully on recruitments on the early stage. Uh, auto convert two stars and one star officers to tactic points because they are really useless. And only convert the three star characters if you really use up all your 200 officer slots. The farm function doesn't care how much troops you have. So for example, if you want to do farming, you can actually send um, 100 troops to do farming. That's what I usually do. And um, it will still bring you back the same amount of resources. So you do not have to worry about that. Every time you do a run, you only can farm 3 times and that will consume 9 tomes. The next thing is that you should use the blitz function to actually use up all your stamina before you go away for a long time especially when you're heading to sleep because uh, you do not want to waste a full stamina doing nothing just make sure you empty out when you come back again it will be full so there are some things to take note before making this mistake um, I, I do make a lot of mistakes when I was doing my gameplays and uh, these are some of the mistakes that are very common and you will want to avoid them okay so mistake number one is do not randomly use your tactic points they are actually very precious. It's not easy to get them. Uh, you will need to keep converting multiple officers in order to get them, which uh, requires money. So please do not waste your tactic points on random soldiers that you find won't be a long term in your party. Unless it is a 5 star draw. Along the way as you play, there's this mission that uh, asks you to awaken an officer. Uh, please do not awaken your main 5 star main officer. Because uh, Awakening Officers requires to, you to sacrifice two same-level officers. 
there's no point in trying to sacrifice two good soldiers uh, for one guy on the third slot of tactic, which you're not sure you're going to put a good skill or not. Sometimes maybe you just could be going with a B-grade tactic and you'll be wasting a lot of time doing that. And, uh, and your capability of occupying lands will definitely drop because of that. So if you want to awaken or train tactics, um, throughout the game they provide you with champ, elite guards or generals you wish you can find which are not useful to you. You can just throw them in and just sacrifice them. Uh, champs and elite guards are dummy for these purposes. The next mistake that is commonly made is um, farming too many tomes on level 3 lands. So as you can see earlier on I mentioned that tomes are used to do farming and subjugating. So farming actually gives you 10,000 of the resource on the level 3 land. But if you do it too many times, you're just uh, being ineffective here. Because uh, you will assess level 4 lands as uh, soon into the game. All right? And they actually give you 12,000 on the basic. The next mistake that uh, people commonly make is that uh, they are using Blitz on a high level land. So the process of Blitz is actually to repeat uh, fighting the land one more time so that you can gain experience from it. So if you're aiming for a high level land, it will really hurt you and deduct a lot of your troops. So you do not want that. You just want to get some experience yeah, using finish your stamina, right? So use it on lands which are slightly below uh, what you can take. For example, if let's say you're already capable to take a level 3 land, so just go to a level 2 land and blitz it. Uh, if you can occupy a level 4 land, just go to a level 2 or 3 land to blitz it. So you just want to wash out all your stamina and have the lessest amount of troop loss during this entire process itself. Um, don't worry about it because the EXP points on low level is rather similar, so you wouldn't lose out that much. Uh, so always keep your soldiers intact. Just, just think about this logic where uh, the more soldiers you lose, the harder your gameplay gets because you need to spend time conscripting and it's really time wasting to keep conscripting soldiers because they eat resources and they eat up your time waiting for them. So please do not try to conscript too much. We should try to achieve a gameplay that we use the least amount of soldiers throughout the game. So the next mistake that uh, people made is that uh, under the early protection period, people try to always break into and conquer other people. You, I mean, people think that they're high and mighty in this game. Uh, you just started out and you're just trying to fight someone off. Well, there, there isn't really a need to. Uh, you don't have to attack other lands now and they may be your friendly alliance they may not be it doesn't matter the reason why you don't do that is because that um, when, when you try to attack someone else's land they, they actually consume double the stamina and uh, they are pretty much harder to fight because uh, they are being occupied before so you're going to spend unnecessary um, soldiers and unnecessary effort to just try and take a land unless you are the one that is on the slower player side then you have no choice but to actually keep up and try to occupy the lands. But if not, if you are still on the early periods, uh, you are the first few players in the game, you definitely will have to land you one and people will not attack you because they also find the logic same too. Another thing to note before making this mistake is that do not evolve your 5-star characters. Honestly speaking, not very effective. You can rather use your 5-star character... Um, if let's say you get two of the same draw, you can actually either sacrifice, inherit the tactic for it, or you can, you can use it for awakening. But um, do not evolve because evolve only gives you a plus 10 state to, of, of your choice. Uh, plus 10 isn't really a lot, to be fair. It wouldn't really help you push that much. So um, you can maximize the efficiency. So unless you really have too many of the same characters and that's the time that you can consider actually involving in them. So let's say if today you get um, five draws and it's all punter, yeah, you can actually just evolve. I think it will be suitable. But if let's say you're, you're just getting like one extra draw or two extra draw of the same character, uh, you rather inherit the tactic or use them for awakening purposes. You cannot put two of the same character into the same team. So there are some in-depth gameplay things that uh, I would like to share with you. Um, hopefully you can take note of this. So just in case you do not know what to do, at least you have an idea what's going to happen. So um, you can actually use more parties to occupy a single land, but you have a five-minute window to do so. 
So let's say if you're trying to take on a level 5 land or a land that is, you have difficulty taking, taking it, you can actually send your first your main party and your side party to go for it. Uh, it pretty much works the same way, the amount of soldiers required to attack. So you just have to make sure that the amounts add up. And also you have to conquer the land. Both of the functions have to be conquering the land. If you just choose to march a soldier there, nothing will happen. It doesn't count. So you have to click Conquer on both units. So the next thing that you should know is that um, civic officers do gain experience points while being assigned to an official role. Um, if you are assigning someone which is a non-civic officer, they will just be there, but they wouldn't gain experience points. So how do you identify a civic officer? Is that um, when you're doing an official assignment, there's this small logo at the top right. It can be a politician logo or either yeah, it can be a charisma logo. So it just depends. The next thing that you should know is when the domestic resource levels up to level 10, um, they will unlock the official for it. So I'm, I'm sure all of you are asking like, why are they locked in the first place? You can't, you can't assess them, but it's as simple as that. You just have to reach level 10 and then uh, you will unlock the role for it. Moving on, um, the next thing that you should know is that training officers actually share the EXP load. So, um, if we're doing a training center today, and uh, if you only assign one officer to the role, uh, he will gain a lot of EXP. But uh, if, let's say, you assign three officers to be training at the same time, pretty much save uh, your money, but the thing is that um, they do not gain as much EXP as uh, assigning one officer to it. So just note that in this game, the max level will be at level 50. So the Wood Ox spawns every day at 8 a.m., 2 p.m., 8 p.m. Um, this is in my time zone. It's a plus 8 GMT. So if you forget to clear the, the Wood Ox before the next time frame, the Ox will not stack. So all you, have to, all you have to do to get the Ox is actually just to march and block its path. So here's what's going to happen when you do this uh, level 7 palace technique. Alright, um, you're going to upgrade your warehouse to level 6, right? And um, you're just going to get stuck at 160 resources. So this is what you want. Going for a level 7 palace uh, requires you to have 288,000 stones. That's really far-fetched from what is required, but um, there's actually a cheating method to it. I won't really call it cheating method, it's just special. Uh, it's a good way to actually help you shortcut your way to level 7 without spending too much resources. Once you reach chapter 8, do not, I repeat, do not claim the mission that gives you stone resources. You can just let it be, keep it in the mission function and just let it be. Make sure before doing all this, you have two requirements. Number one is that you have reached the level that I told you to do so, which is um, the level 7 uh, farms, a stone, level 6 warehouse, all these, all these requirements for the upgrading constructs have been done. Make sure to reach at every single level. The next thing is that you must have the maximum capacity of the stone, at least. So meaning to say it should be 160, a point 160 before you start to click the claim mission button. So this is what's going to happen. Um, whatever they are provided you on the levels is meant for you to shortcut Chapter 8, 9, 10 in a row, one shot. Just finish up chapter 8, 9, 10. And that will immediately net you level 7 palace upgrade. If you can't, if you really find that this method is already broken, meaning, meaning to say that um, you accident, accidentally claim one of the stone mission, then you have no choice but to upgrade to level 7 warehouse and you gotta try again later. Um, if you are really short of a few more stones to reach there, then just click on farm. Uh, you can farm how many times you like in order to make you reach to 160 stones as soon as possible. So with that being said, congratulations, you got your level 7 palace in less than 48 hours. The remaining time is for you to go out there and make sure you get all the level 4 lands and level 5 lands fast. Okay, but just remember, keep your troops intact. Do not lose too much soldiers doing all this process. And uh, everything will be great from here on. So I'm going to tell you some things about the mid game onwards. All right. Uh, since uh, it won't be shown in this video, all you had to do is uh, just get a few tips on how to play the mid game. 
So always aim out to maximize the conscription, search centers, and encampments. Encampments is really important because they straight give um, each character a troop boost. So you can actually take on bigger lands with this um, troop boost amount. So encampments are really very important. Search centers give you um, free characters, uh, four star characters, and mostly uh, lieutenants, which are three star. They also give you uh, materials and items, sometimes resources for um, your blacksmith upgrades. So search center is really good. It refreshes every day. Use your coins on them. Finish it. Next is to actually max out conscription because if you want to play this game fast, you want to take on high level fast, you need the soldiers to come faster. So the war room is uh, increasing the maximum uh, cost of the soldier you can own in a team. Well, if let's say you have many good 5-star draws, um, you can actually uh, level up the war room. But if you, you don't have, then it's fine. Just leave the war room as it, war room as it is. So um, again, I'm going to emphasize from the mid game, it's still that uh, you don't really have to focus on the garrison upgrades. It's really not important unless you intend to go with war with your neighbors or your enemy alliances. But just keep in mind how you pace your game. Uh, it will reach to a certain point where alliance will start fighting each other. So you just have to have some um, of these uh, garrison upgrades soon. So next is to prioritize working on expanding your territory and leveling up your troops. Honestly speaking, level 8 palace is quite sufficient. You don't have to go to level 9 or 10. Level 9 or 10 is just at least to scale up the maximum you can go. It, it doesn't really cost much of a difference of whatever you get there and you'll be wasting a lot of resources trying to get to the upgrades of level 9 and 10. It's really draining. So don't do it unless you have very good per hour resource and you got a lot of time and you know, resource just keep coming in. So thank you for watching the video. I hope this really helps you a lot. Um, I'm one of the players that actually struggled through this game, but I managed to find out how to play it better. I won't say it's the best method. There are better methods out there, but um, this is definitely sufficient for you to get to where get you where you want to. And I really hope you're enjoying this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope this guide can bring you to the next level. Cheers, mate.